Hi everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and do a watercolor painting today. Um, I did get a few responses that you guys are interested in the water mixable oils. So I'm going to do those on another another day when I have a little more time. Um, I don't have any of this set up or any of that, but um, yeah, I'd like to do an oil painting with you guys. Um, I didn't know anybody was interested in that. It seemed like everybody wanted watercolor. And there were a couple of you who also wanted to see me do some pastel work. I do have some older, very quick videos on pastel. If you go back to the beginning of my um, my videos, I'm not sure if I have a playlist for that. Um, if not, I will make a playlist for that so that you can go back and, and see the couple videos that I did on pastel. They were very quick and simple. It was my a couple of my first videos, so so they're not real great. But anyway, today I thought I would do a watercolor, and I think I'm going to go ahead and use my Mission Gold watercolors today. Um, these are the colors, and most of them are pretty light fast. There's a few in here that... Um, a couple. Let's see. There's that opera, opera um, rose or pink or whatever that is not very light fast. <clears throat> this is on a one to five rating scale, and most of these have five stars, which is good. So there are a few four, and then there's just the one that is three. So that's really getting down there, and I think that's being very generous. I'm not really sure how much that would hold up. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use these paints today and we'll see how it goes. Um, I thought that I would work in my Pentelic uh, field book today and um, let me just get back here and find my, these are mistakes. These were things I was trying to do with the, <laughs> with the, um, poor watercolors that did not turn out, so um, I ended up doing that fall painting, which was this one, but um, now I'm going to move on to this side here, and my paper got a little bit dirty, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and clip it down, and I think I'm going to be working vertically today. This, this landscape that I found on Paint My Photo is more of a vertical landscape. Let me turn off my lights so that you all can see. Whoops, I'm sorry. Um, this is the landscape. I thought the colors were very pretty in it. Actually, they're more vibrant through my phone than they are on my iPad, but then again, the iPad doesn't have as great quality camera as my phone does, which is what I'm recording with today. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I thought there were some pretty colors in it. It looks like it's early fall. Things are just starting to change a bit, so there's a little color to the trees. But um, I really like the bridge. I thought the bridge was pretty. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm just trying to get my placement here. I'm measuring first. This comes to the edge. And it goes up like this. Just doing a light line in case I need to erase. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this. And then there's a bush there. So as it's coming down, that'll go behind the bush. So we'll just do this. And then there's... Some sort of a look like that, and then this comes up. This one is bigger. I'm getting my 
circles off though. And then it comes down like that, and then it goes like that. And then there's another one of those that comes up here. See, I still do a lot of erasing. I'm not the best drawer in the world, but I'm getting there. I'll get there. Got to start somewhere. And then this one is smaller again, like the other side. This side came up too high. And there's no, no thing over here that goes up, so if you don't have that, then the bridge has this, and then it has that. And that, I think I'm gonna do this in pen. That's straight on the top. So I'm going to go straight across. And then this comes down again like that. Oh, my dog's going to bark because my husband just pulled up. He's got to let me know he's home. So he'll sound like he's crying and wailing and there'll be gnashing of teeth. But here he goes. <laughs> Who is it? He's not being too loud today. He's going to go through withdrawal because my son is moving out tomorrow. So it's going to be hard on him. Okay, now the rest of this is just the river, um, which comes in about here on this side. Comes over here on this side. I'm so sorry. Um, there's a hill. And then the river... It's kind of jaggedy with grass, and then it comes in here. This river comes in here, comes out. There's grasses here, and then it's all bunchy with plants. It's a technical term. And then it just kind of disappears because the hills are so high, you can't see the river or the creek or whatever that is. And then this one comes in. Whoops, just checking my angle here. Alright, so I'm just drawing this side in. And it comes in pretty fast. It's so hard to see this. The lighting is dark on the photo. And then it comes right in like this. Actually, it comes in a little further. It comes in like this. And it just disappears kind of around this corner. And then it goes down again here. There's a slope. And this hill comes up. And then we get a hill coming up here. And we've got hill coming up here. And then we've got trees that come, oh, they're about to here. This one is down here. Then there's one up here, and then this one is kind of a focal tree because it's yellow. So, I'm just going to put in a couple lines so that I know exactly where I want my trees. This one comes right down straight, 
goes over this way, and then there's one up here that comes up with branches. <clears throat> and these are very low, off in the distance. And they come down here by the bridge. And then there's some distant ones that all look kind of blue-gray. And then there's this one that comes in. Okay, so I think we're all set. Um, the stuff that's going on back here, though, let me just look at this photo really close. It looks like there's a hill that comes across here. Does it cover the whole thing? Okay, according to what I can see, I think this is water. Whoops, where did it go? Right here. I think that's a reflection of water in here. I think. It's hard to say. So, whoops, darn it. I hate when that happens. So I'm going to use that as water because I think it would look prettier that way. So this comes up like this. And the river is going to go back that way. And then it looks like the hill stops right about here. And then it comes across over here and it covers the entire, entire thing. And then on the right-hand side, there's actually a tree right here in front of the bridge. So this is a tree right here. Or a bush. It looks like a bush. There's a plant in front of it. I thought that was a tree trunk, but this is a tree. And then there's some trees that come up in front of the bridge. The bridge continues to go down like this. And you can kind of see it behind the tree. Oh, there's another bridge back here that I didn't see. That's really cute. I've got to add that in. I hope I've got the space for it. This, I don't know if you can see it here, but right here is a fence, like a bridge or a lookout or something. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. It looks really, really cute. And take that back. And it's right by this tree here, so it looks like it comes right off of this. It's probably behind it. And then there's the stone here. Just doing it lightly in pencil. When I go over it in pen, I will get rid of all the superfluous stuff that I don't need. And this comes down. And then there's another one that comes down, too. Okay. And then there's trees and bushes that come up to it. So, now, whoops, darn it. This is another one I want to do, but I'm not going to do it today. I just don't have the time. It's already 6 o'clock, so I don't know when I'm going to get this posted, either. I probably should just do a different video so you guys have something to watch, because I know I hear if I don't put a video up, people are like, where are you? So... Maybe I will do that. But anyway, let's get started on the painting. I'm just going to... I really don't need to wet these, but I like to wet them because then I can just dip my brush in when I'm using full pigment. Um, I'm going to start by doing the sky first. It's a cloudy day, but I'm not sure I'm going to make it that cloudy. I'd like to add a little light and shadow to this, but we'll see. Okay, now let me get some. Oh, what do I want to use today? Let's see. I think I'll use some cerulean blue. This is really bright. Yeah, I'm not sure I like that. So let me add some ultramarine deep to it to tone that, tone that down a little bit. I'll mix it together. And then bring the blue down here. There. 
And that will be my sky. I like the double colors in it. So we'll let that dry. Got some resist up here still. I'm not sure what that's about, but it drives me crazy. It's like somebody handled every page of the book. That's why I say don't buy your your um, sketchbooks in a store like Michael's or anything, because when you do that, people go through the books, they flip the pages back, they rub the paper and feel it and everything, and they've just put lotion on their hands or whatever, and it drives me flipping crazy. I can't tell you when I first started out how many of my Strathmore books were like that. It used to be so aggravating that I'd, I'd tear them up. I couldn't use them, so I would tear up the sheets and and use different, like I'd cut up the pieces that I could use. And then I thought, that's it. I'll start buying them from online. And that was a little bit better, but I still had the problem because they didn't come wrapped in plastic. Then I started buying good books. And I didn't have the problem anymore until this one. And I'm wondering if I did it. I must have done it. I think this was wrapped in plastic, but I can't be positive. I just put in an order for a bunch of new books, too. And I'm really excited about those. I'm going to finish putting my sketch in here. There are little holes on either side of this. Oh, and on this side, too. And then there's different colored red brick. Then there's the gray, the gray. Um, there's this down here. i got to put that in. And then this side of the bridge is showing. Starting at the center. This is up too high to the top of the bridge. We've got to kick this down here a little bit. Boy, I don't like this pencil for this. It's dirtying up my paper. Um, I think what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to grab my pen. I'm going to use my um, Platinum Carbon pen. This is one of my favorite pens. If you're new to um, fountain pens. This is one of my favorites. The Platinum Carbon. This is just their cheap, I think they're either $9 or $12 pens. You can get cartridges for them, or this one's a cartridge, or um, you can get converters for them. And I have a red one coming. It's a different brand. I think it's by Pentel. I've never tried it, but it had really good ratings. Now this one is the one that I got from Wine Lover one of my subscribers and this one is um, has got a cartridge that I filled with brown ink which looks like it needs to be refilled and I don't know maybe I should use brown ink today should I use brown ink maybe I will we'll go with brown that'll be fun since this is a red bridge it could be brown and that would be fine so I'm just gonna do that Liz Steele says that if you're doing your lines, I think it was her who said that, when you're doing your lines, do them like you know what, you're, what you want to do. Don't hesitate because that's when you get, whoops, I messed that part up. That's when you get um, squiggly lines if you're trying to keep them straight. You want to do it like you mean it. I went over this on the top, but that's all right. There. Sometimes I will do this before I've got all my drawing done. I'll put my sky in and... Um, 
it can be drying while I'm working on the other stuff, which is kind of nice. This bridge um, thing has like, it looks like it's almost got five sides or three sides or something. I'm going to make this wider. And I'm going to bring this out like that. And then this side comes out like that. I'm going to move this over. <coughs> And then bring that down. Okay, so now this middle part of the bridge, I'm doing the under part, and you can see here, oh, no, you can't because I got my lights on. You can see here that you can see part of the underside, only here, not on this side, and the same with this. So that's what I'm drawing in along the sides, or the left side. This one comes past the halfway point. This one comes up to the halfway point. It's because we're angled. We're angled at this angle. So over here you see less than half, half, more than half showing on the underside of the bridge. So that's what you want to look at when you're drawing. Just notice those points. All you're doing is putting in shapes. So this one is at the halfway point, and this one is just past the halfway point. And then it ends about here. So we'll just do this like that. And then this one comes down like that. <clears throat> and then there's a little white, not white, probably gray decorative square in the bridge right there at the center of each part of the bridge. And this one just barely shows. Um, now you can't see anything on the other side of the bridge from the top, so we're just going to leave that alone. And I'm not going to put the lines in for the grass on the hill. I want to do that with, with the paint. Um, so I think that's all I'm going to put in as far as lines go. I might add a little bit on the trees, like I like to do, my kind of signature thing that I do um, when I'm done. So I'm sorry, I forgot to turn the light back on. I'm like, gosh, why is it so dark in here? <laughs> And I can turn my light on, other light on brighter too, and that might help. So now my, my sky is just about dry. I've got a unique little cloud here from my resist. And I'm going to go ahead, and hopefully this is dry ink now. I'm going to see if it's going to smear or not. No, it is not. So I'm going to get rid of these pencil lines that are driving me crazy. Actually, I'm going to try using the gummy eraser here and see if that... Nope, that smears it. The gummy eraser smears the ink, but this eraser does not. Isn't that funny? That's why I was having problems with it before. Huh. Very interesting. I can even go over that fresh ink mark over there, no problem, with a plastic eraser or whatever these are called, vinyl erasers. I don't know what people call them. I'm going to get rid of this pencil line for the bush because I know there's a bush there. Um, I'm going to keep this hill a little bit, but that was wrong. Where's my pencil? Okay, I lost it, so I'm going to have to use a darker one. This one is a 2B. 2B or not to be. And that comes way down because this bridge is up high. It looks really high up, like it's floating. So I'm going to bring this down over here. 
and then that's the distance. Okay, just so I know where that is. And then the rest is okay. So now I want to start, because the bridge has different um, color brick in here, I'm going to go in with a very pale wash, and then I'm going to start increasing like with little rectangular dots to make the bridge turn into a brick bridge, if you know what I mean. I um, hope that makes sense. Uh, let me see. I need to find my brush here. I got this brush that I love. I'm using my Rosemary & Company brushes. This one looks like it is a size, can barely see the number anymore, three. Got my flat here, which is a seven, which is a half inch. And then I have my uh, size eight. And then this 10 is the Pinax high tech brush that I got from my Doodle and Sketch. Um, I'm so excited about that whole thing. Um, that they're going to want my reviews. They want me to continue reviews. I can't believe it. They're excited about it. I'm excited about it. So cool. Okay, now um, I'm going to put a lay a little green down also. So let me get a bigger brush here for that. I want a wash brush. I'll just use my number three arches, which I'm starting to have problems with, I think. It's starting to get old. And the green I will start with will be, oh, it's going to be a bright green. I'm going to use the yellow green here which is very bright. I'm going to tone it down a little bit with some greenish yellow, <laughs> which is more like a green gold if I were using Daniel Smith or something. No, nope, that's still too, it's too yellow. I'm going to have trouble mixing these colors a little bit because I'm not used to them. That's a little bit better. Um, I might as well just bring this down all the way. This is kind of like plant life here. Not really grass. Then there's that bush comes in right there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do there. Okay, now on this side, oh no, I've got a big resist on this one. I'm really disappointed. Hopefully the next book will not be like that. I'm hoping that I did this by accident, because if I didn't, I'll be bummed out. Gonna have this almost meeting there on that hill. Okay, so that can dry, and I forgot I can put my brushes back in this. I'm going to pull them forward so that I have everything right where I need it. The ones I am using right in front. Okay, now for my bridge, I'm going to use the red-brown from the set, but I'm going to water it down a little bit. Hopefully this isn't too bright. We'll just start here. Mm. Yeah, I think I can do that. And instead of leaving little marks, I'm just going to use white gouache at the end and mix a light gray to go over it with opaque, since this is in a sketchbook. Not a big deal. 
because there are little gray bricks in here. It almost looks like reclaimed brick, you know? I love the look of reclaimed brick. I love that old natural look. When we bought our house, I said, I want reclaimed brick. And my husband's like, no, it'll crumble. And we ended up in a reclaimed brick home. And I love it because some of the bricks still have writing on them. And it just looks so cool. But he's right. <laughs> They're crumbling. Because the house was built in, in the 1960s. Whoops, darn it. Don't go outside the lines, people. I'm trying to keep my hand off the green area. And I went outside the line. I'm just going to cover up these holes because they're going to be black. This looks very bright orange. It's hard when I'm not used to the colors that I'm using. Changing up watercolors like that. I'm trying to use watercolors that you all might already own. I know a lot of you already own these, so that's why I'm using them. But I prefer my Daniel Smith, because that's why I, what I like. I can cover up at the top. It's down at the bottom that looks funny. It's got like beige mortar or something at the center, which is weird. Very weird. This one has it too. Starts about there. Okay, that's it for that. Now, my sky is just about dry, so I can go in and do my trees a little bit. Some of them, and I'll come back to that bridge again later. I gotta zoom out here. On the right hand side, we've got a lot of golden color. So I'll use a little bit of that. We've got yellow ochre. These are not transparent, which kind of bummed me out. And the greenish yellow. I'm going to mix the yellow ochre and greenish yellow together to try to come up with a gold color. That's still too green. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. Um, I want to I'll use permanent yellow deep. Um, to help golden that up a little bit. Yeah, that worked. Okay. Just putting in a light covering of that because I'm going to go back in and define some of the branches that are hanging out toward me that are kind of foreshortened toward me. And I'm a little bit off on this. My bridge should have been a little smaller and this should have been over here, but we're just going to fudge it and deal with what we have since it's already in pen. I can't move it over now, it's too late. And then there's a green one next to it. That's kind of deep green. It's got a little gold coming out, but Am I in frame? Yes. It's hard to tell when I'm in a vertical kind of a mode here. I'm 
Then there was a little bit of gold popping in and out. So I'm just going to drop a little bit of color in there. And then the next one is a golden yellow. I think I'm too wet to go back in though. Let me just shoot this a little bit. Okay, now that is too opaque. Ugh, I hate that. I don't like opaque colors for things like that. So I'm going to change that color. So I'm not using yellow ochre. I'm going to use that in a little, I'm going to use yellow, that permanent yellow deep, and I'm going to add a little bit of raw umber to it. That's better. And this one just comes up a little ways. And there's something that's coming up here behind this one. Might be the same tree. And we got green again after that. So I'm going to go with, in with the green on the other side. We have a green tree that has got a couple areas that are trying to turn yellow, but not quite. So I'm just going to go in here and just give this a nice soft color, except I shouldn't have hit the thing here, the bridge. Got a little more resist going on. And then there's another tree there. I'm just going to change the green up a little bit. It's not enough of a little bit. We'll change it to this instead. There. Then on this side of the bridge, I didn't notice there's a bush here, but I'm not going to bring it all the way up. I'm just going to bring it to here. And of course, this color is transparent. There. And we got this bush over here, which wants to come up high also. I sure wasn't paying attention. I'm going to kind of wash that out. Although you can see the bridge through it a little bit, I guess. side has a little bit of brown to it. That wasn't bush. Darn it, darn it, darn it. I'm sorry, you guys. This was part of the hill behind it, and then that was the bush coming in. We will just fudge it. That's what I'm doing. There. That works all right. And then this must come down. Yes, it does. It comes down like this. That.
Now I'm just adding some green up there in front of the blue in the water because the hills come together so much there that you can see the green murkiness of the water um, and then the reflections start further out and then I'm just adding in some of the grasses near the near the edge there and I think I'm coming back down to do that again I'm working on the trees I'm jumping all over and using up the green that I had going in different areas and now what I'm doing is taking different levels values of red and different pigments of brown to put little dashes on the bridge to make the bricks and in order to get the gray brick I took a little bit of white gouache with uh, just a little drop of indigo blue which in the mission golds is more like a Payne's gray in order to get the gray color and then I'm going to come back later and put a little more on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some shadowing in and finish up my grasses. Um, and somebody asked me in a comment I haven't had a chance to respond to yet, but she asked if my book, this field book, is the same quality paper as the blue book that I like. I'm going to just grab my blue book. It's been a while since I used it. I've been using these other two. Um, let me grab it because it seems like I like the blue book better, but I don't know if it's just because I like sewn bindings or what. Um, They feel about the same thickness. I think the blue, I think the book, the blue book is a little smoother paper. Um, no, I mean, I don't think it is definitely. I can see a difference in the tooth. Um, this, the tooth on this paper is kind of, um, almost looks like little miniature X's that overlap. And on this one, it's just very smooth. I do like this paper better, personally. Um, but let me work on it again, and then I can tell you for sure which one it actually feels better to me. Because I can't remember. So if I work on this now, and then work on another one in a little while, then, then I should do a little bit better. So, um, okay. I'm sorry this is taking so long to get posted. I haven't had a lot of painting time this last week. It's been crazy. So um, what I did here um, when I was working in Fast Forward, I did use my, my um, 
branch and or tree and texture brush from Rosemary and Company. It's a half inch 32 series. Um, I need to fix some of that up. I need to fix some of the reflections in the water, uh, fix my grasses a little bit, and finish up on the trees, put in some shadows, and then I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to pull my photo up again here. It was, like I said, it was a cloudy day, but since I've made it a little bit sunnier, um, it looks like the shadows were coming. I can see a little bit of shadow right here. You guys can't see it because I have my lights on, but so it must be coming from the left and it's coming forward a little bit, which means this would all be the same shadow. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to have it coming in more from the left or above. Um, let me make a shadow color here. And then I can do that. Cleaning out my mixing trays. Okay, I guess I didn't have to. I've got my big one right here, but taking a little bit of permanent violet, um, a little bit of indigo, very little indigo, and mixing them together. The indigo in this is more is more of a Payne's gray looking color, but it gives me almost a moon glow effect, effect of color, but um, only moon glow has some granulation to it from what I can remember. So this comes down like this. Oh, that looks dark. And then do the same here. So it'll all be dark under here. Okay. Over here, I still am having trouble seeing what's going on because of the darkness in the photo. I guess that's a bush. Excuse me. I set this down overnight, and now I'm coming back to it today and finishing up here. I'm just adding uh, some shadowing and touch-up on the trees, and I'm going to add my shadows. Um, mm -hmm. To the bridge and uh, those kinds of things so right now this I've I realized that there was a bush there in front of that fence on the grassy side so I was adding the bush in I didn't notice that it was a bush until today um, and I'm just darkening it up a little bit in some of the deep recessed areas of the bush You can see here that I am doing the same thing over to the tree on the left, but if you look up in the sky, yesterday I decided to just add a couple simple distant birds um, to the painting. I just thought it added something. And you can see also in the rear, just over the bridge, how those trees are kept very light in value. Um, and that is because they it gives them some atmospheric perspective. Um, and what I mean by that is basically that as you're looking, if you were standing out in a field somewhere and looking off into the distance and there's trees along a, a line 
uh, you know, lining a farm or something like that, you'll notice that as you get further into the distance, those trees get kind of atmospheric, like, like you can almost see a mist over them or they kind of gray down. They lose the vibrancy of color. Um, if you've never noticed that before, just look when you're out driving or as a passenger <laughs> or um, if you're out painting somewhere, just look off into the distance and notice the difference in the value of the colors of the trees. Your brain's going to tell you that they're green or yellow or whatever color they are. That's what your brain is going to say they are. But if you notice the values using the opposite side of your brain, um, then you'll see that they're kind of misty looking. And I think that a lot of that too um, just comes with practice, but you basically have to retrain your brain to, to use the right side of the brain in order to turn off the reasoning. Your brain's trying to make sense of things for you so that you don't have to think about it, it which we don't. But when you force yourself to think about it, that's when you'll notice all these differences. And it'll take time for that to click in, but you need to practice it. It took me probably a good year before it really started to click in. Could have been longer. I don't know. And there's even times now when I forget things and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I wasn't thinking about that. I need to think about it. So... Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Drinking my coffee, maybe. That might be it. Now here I'm going to be putting a little bit of grass reflection down in the water in the background so that you'll notice that it is water.
Now, in the photo, it shows uh, grasses and stuff coming all the way up on the front, but along the front, and I think that that creek comes up, but then it makes a right turn there where my fingers are. And, but it's hard to tell in the photo. It's kind of confusing to the eye. So I decided to just put grass along a portion of it. So it looks like it could have gone straight or to the right or maybe both. And it adds a little bit in the corner, but, but that's about it. So I'm gonna be adding the grasses in and then I'm gonna add some plants that were poking up a lot higher also. And then I'm gonna finish up on the bridge. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add more of a brown-red color to a, just a different value of brick to the um, bridge. And then I'm gonna add a little more of that gray. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna put some shadowing in. And if you notice it now, the bridge just looks very flat. Um, you look at those little columns that come up in front. You'll see when I move my hand over. Um, see, they just kind of blend right in to the bridge. But watch how it changes when I put the shadowing on it. And you'll see it kind of show more dimension. And it'll look less flat and more three-dimensional.
I'm also going to go in with more of that gray color and add more of the grayish white brick in. Here I'm just adding some darkness under the tree at the base that shows up and then I want to put a little shadowing on the inside of, on the right side of the trees there where they're a little bit, would be a little bit darker since I've changed how the light is coming in on the photo. Now, look at the bridge and notice the flatness to it. Now I'm going to start to add the shadowing in under the gray areas and then also along the right side of the columns that are coming up in front of the bridge. 
and it'll start to kind of pop off the page a little bit. So you can already see a little bit of a difference. It's very subtle and that's all it takes to add some dimension to your subject and give it more of a three-dimensional effect just with a simple line. Do you notice the difference there? Now I'm just going to go in and do some finishing touches on the grasses and on the reflections and then we will be finished.
Okay, so this is the finished painting. Um, I took a few liberties with it, as I said. I put a little light in and added some shadowing so that it helped to make this pop off the off the bridge a little bit and gave some ridges underneath. Um, it added some more three dimensional effects. So if you if you're looking at your work and um, for the beginners out there. If you're saying, well, my work looks so flat, it just looks plain. There's no three-dimensional effect to it. Um, it's usually because of value changes. And when I say value, I talk about the lightness and darkness of a certain pigment. Um, you really have to hone in on those things when you're looking at um, whatever it is you're painting, whether it's from a photograph or from life. I always say it's best to learn from life, although I did start with photographs because photographs tend to be a little easier. They take a three-dimensional whatever, still life, landscape, whatever. They, they take it from three-dimensional back to two-dimensional on a flat surface. So that makes it easier for you to see um, how to lay out, lay out your drawings. But um, when you put them on paper, in order to get that three-dimensional effect back, you have to change your values. So in doing that, like adding shadows, the shadow wasn't there, but I added it in from the fence. I don't know if you can see that. I put a little bit of shadowing on the bush there um, and adding the shadowing there and underneath the bridge a little bit, um, those kinds of things, that helps. Adding some darkness in the trees and then brightness, that helps as well. I put some shadowing on the right-hand side of the trees. This one's kind of cut off, so I didn't bother with that one. Um, also in your water, you want to try to reflect whatever is above down below, but, um, just keep, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you've got certain colors in your sky, make sure you're putting them in the water. And if you have clouds in your sky, make sure you leave clouds in your water and those kinds of things. So that will help. But value is, is the key in order to bring those paintings popping off the page. So I hope this helped a little bit and um, everybody have a great day. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and um, leave your comments down below. And um, I will get to everybody's video requests eventually. It had just been a few days since I had painted, so I wanted to get a painting in. But um, I will get to the other video requests for those of you who've been waiting for a month or more. Um, and uh, everybody have a great day. And remember, be kind to each other. Bye-bye.